Which came first? The chicken or the egg? Did the universe have a beginning? And if so, what happened before then? Where did the universe come from? And where is it going? We have been very lucky. I mean, my family and Stephen and everybody. You have your disasters, but the point is that we have survived. Everybody has disasters, and yet some people disappear and are never seen again. Flying bombs were very alarming. So they came buzzing over and then they would cut out. And when you heard the bang, you knew it wasn't you, so you went back to your meal or whatever. But one did fall, quite close to our house, and it blew the back windows out, so the glass was sticking dagger points all out of the opposite wall. When Stephen was born, we decided he'd better be born in Oxford. So while I was staying in the hospital, I went to Blackwells in Oxford, and I bought an astronomical atlas. <laughs> One of my sisters-in-law said, this is a very prophetic thing for you to have done. How real is time? Will it ever come to an end? Where does the difference between the past and the future come from? Why do we remember the past, but not the future? I can remember the day when we travelled through London and the blackout was over. And the trains, instead of being shut in, by blinds, so you just travelled in a train. We were coming over one of the bridges, and all the lights, well, such lights as were left, <laughs> were on in London, but it was also a completely starry night, and you could see them right all, it was beautiful. I remember we all used to lie on the grass, looking straight up through the telescope, and seeing the wonders of the stars. And Stephen always had a strong sense of wonder, and I could see that the stars would draw him, and further than the stars. I was born exactly 300 years after the death of Galileo. I estimate that about 200,000 other babies were also born that day. I don't know whether any of them was later interested in astronomy. My first memory is of Isabel pushing a rather antiquated carriage-built pram along North Road with Stephen and Mary in it, sort of um, looking very large because they had large heads and pink cheeks and they were very noticeable. They all looked different from ordinary people. I can remember visiting the Hawking home, oh, several times. It was the sort of place where, if you were invited to stay to supper, you might uh, uh, be allowed to have your conversation with Stephen, but uh, the rest of the family would be sitting at the table reading a book, a behaviour which was not really approved of in my circle, um, but which was tolerated from the Hawkings because they were recognised to be very eccentric, highly intelligent, very clever people, but still a bit odd. My impression of the Hawking family was that they were all like that, except for Stephen, who seemed to be the only normal member of the family. 
Stephen used to reckon he knew, I think it was 11 ways of getting into the house. And I could only find 10 of them. I'm not sure where the other way was. On the north side of the house, there was a bicycle shed. Had a door at the front and a door at the back. Above that, there was a window into the L-shaped room. And at the front, you could get sort of round the corner onto the roof. And from that level, you could get onto the main roof. I think one of the ways Stephen could get in was on the main roof. As I say, he was a much better climber than I was. I still don't know what the 11th one was. Before the 20th century, it was thought that the universe had existed forever or had been created at some time in the past, more or less as we observe it today. People found comfort in the thought that even though they may grow old and die, the universe was eternal and unchanging. I gave up playing games with Stephen, oh, when he was ill that time, about, when he was about 12 because he started taking games terribly seriously. We had Monopoly. And first of all, the Monopoly board sprang railways going across it to add to the complications. And then Monopoly just wasn't adaptable enough. It ended up with a fearful game called Dynasty, which as far as I can make out, because I say I never played it, went on forever because there's no way of ending it. It was almost a substitute for living, as far as I could make out. It took hours and hours and hours. I thought it was a terrible game. I, I couldn't imagine anyone getting getting taken up with that. But um, well, Stephen always had a very complicated mind, and I felt as much as anything. It was the complication of it that appealed to him. When I was in high school, I learned that light from distant galaxies was shifted to the red. This meant that they were moving away from us, and that the universe was expanding. But I didn't believe it. A static universe seemed much more natural. It could have existed, and could continue to exist, forever. We were discussing the possibility of the spontaneous generation of life. And I think that Stephen made a remark which indicated not only that he'd thought of this, but he'd even also come across some calculations as to how long it might take. At that time, I think I made a comment to one of my friends, John McLenahan, I think that Stephen will turn out to be unusually capable. I don't think I put it in quite those words, but I made some such remark to him, and he disagreed. And so we made a bet on the subject. In our childish way, we bet a bag of sweets on the issue. And incidentally, I reckon that my bet has come correct, and I think I'm entitled to payment which has not yet been made. 